I'm excited. I'm here with Ivo Kerner from IBM. Ivo is one of the uh, VPs for IBM Systems. And what I would like to talk about today is the future of artificial intelligence and machine learning. What, what are you seeing there? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. <coughs> and uh, artificial intelligence, it's a, it's a very broad topic. Uh, what I see is that, uh, let's say, you will, it's my perception here, and I think that, that's more or less shared. Uh, we will see artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning really penetrating every area of our private life and business life. Yeah. Um, I think we s you see it already in uh, appliances that you use, but I think uh, the biggest benefit we will see uh, in manufacturing processes, uh, consumption of, uh, let's say, data to really make real-time decisions, mm -hmm. and more in the manner of supporting decisions, not machines taking over the decision process. Yeah, so I think that, that's an important uh, So we are all augmenting rather than replacing? The, absolutely, and that's why let's say you see IBM's language is more about augmented intelligence than not artificial intelligence, yeah. because it's, it's, first of all, I think it will take another 50, 60 years, that's my personal opinion, before you have an intelligence built that really could completely 100% interact with an individual. Yeah. We have Project Debata uh, that you potentially saw here today, mm -hmm. which is all, already very close, yeah, but again it's uh, trained yeah. in a limited topo topology and a limited uh, area, and I don't think we'll have a broader human-like artificial intelligence very soon, but we'll see and have it already a lot in decision supporting processes um, where real-time information is used in deep learning uh, methodology, machine learning, mm -hmm. that really give you a hint what your next best, best action should be. So if you, you, you work with lots of different companies, you see what they're doing in practice, um, Anyone who wants to prepare for this future of artificial intelligence, what should businesses be looking at? What are some of the, the, the key use cases maybe today towards the next 10 years or so? What, what do you see there? Um, honestly, I think that really varies by industry that you're working Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the, for me, that's the most critical point if you really want to start on a successful AI journey. Yeah? Uh, if you start that, that scope too big, um, I don't want to say you're deemed to fail, but it's going to be very complicated. Yeah? So I think uh, the, the, best, the best use cases are the ones that you, uh, let's say, you really define in a maybe initial small scope, mm -hmm. but where you already have. Um, let's say, the data ready and handy. Mm. Because the experience that uh, we have in the, in the applications that uh, we do with our clients, most of them bought in to the topic of artificial intelligence, but then when you basically go the next step in the project, what data can you provide to feed and train the algorithm, uh, we struggle. And that's where we have the most, most of the delays. Yeah? So instead of having a project, a minimal viable product done in four to six weeks, mm -hmm. it takes us four months to prepare the data because mm -hmm. it's not ready. So coming back to your initial question, yeah, it is for me, basically you should, if, if, you, if you take an area, it should be the area where you feel comfortable that you have data already, where you have clean data, collected data, and then uh, where you basically see that um, you have different outcomes or you had different outcomes in the past. And I'll give you one example here. One of the initial AI projects that we did there was um, basically in a uh, concrete factory yeah? mm -hmm. company yeah? in South America who basically was doing concrete. Yeah? And you think it's an easy process, but if you really let's say make concrete, uh, you have a concrete mill mm -hmm. and uh, the experience this company had is depending on the operator they had different outcomes. Mm -hmm. yeah? So somehow there is a kind of quality and learning process and we collected let's say data out of uh, 10 of those concrete mills 
uh, fed them into a machine learning algorithm, and uh, that basically improved the quality of the non so experienced Interesting. concrete mill operators. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you see it in your business, let's say we have a lot of data, we have a lot of input, but you have various quality challenges, that could be a, uh, a quick win mm. if you invest in. Very good. So make it industry specific. I agree. Make sure you have data. Yeah, good, 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 good point. What what do you see as the, the biggest mistakes companies make, or what would be what would you say? Here are some obstacles. Here are some real things you need to worry about in order to make your AI journey successful. What would you say as as final takeaways? The final takeaways. Let's say you, you need to uh, you, you need to manage the expectation. Yeah. As I said at the beginning, yeah you're not going to create an artificial intelligence that's going to run your company. Yeah. You, let's say you will fix, uh, I don't want to say point solutions, but you will fix point problems mm -hmm. in your first part. The second part is, um, despite just using technology that you will need, you need to think about how you really uh, make it part of your process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's the other downside we see is, Companies invest a lot into building a model, mm -hmm. and then they struggle to make it part of their uh, regular business. Mm -hmm. and then the investment is basically fruitless. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.